Hello farmers, welcome back to Goldcrest Valley. Yes, the canola harvest has been going on for like the past oh, 30 minutes or so. Got that field over there done as you can see. And uh, I'm working on the two fields down below. And I haven't been keeping track how much canola has gone into the silo, but we can check later on. I think we had some canola in there to begin with, but uh, I would like to see when I get everything harvested and put in there what the potential we can have when the winter time comes. So last episode, you know, I had a little problem with the covers opening up. Same issue as I had when we had, I think it was the Pottinger seed drill last year. And uh, then, and also last episode, you guys told me that uh, since the last update Giants had, some of the key bindings have been changed around for some reason. The weird thing is, uh, why I couldn't understand it is, in last episode I was using the, uh, the uh, Kubota spreader and when I was going down to the seed hut, um, I used the same key as I always do, and it opened up, but when I left, uh, yeah, it wouldn't close. Uh, but uh, in doing what you guys said, you know, the Z key apparently is like the main key to try. That works on the spreader. So the spreader, yeah, the Z key will now open and close the spreader. Um, but I cannot find the key that will open up the seed drill. I've even, I, mean, I, I pressed every button there po possibly is. Uh, I've tried the control plus other buttons, multiple buttons with the troll, uh, nothing there. I've done everything just about, you know, put my face on the keyboard and roll it around to see what would happen. And I can't get the seed drill to open. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. But luckily I don't have to drill anything for a while and if I need to, well, we just have to go to the store and put the seed and fertilizer in the drill that way until I can figure out how to open up that seed drill because it opened up before for us with the same key that I've always had, so I don't know. But anyways, uh, now that we got that out of the way, you can see how much harvesting I've gotten done here so far. Uh, well, probably just another another pass after this one, this field, maybe you know slightly more than that. And then we got what we got in front of us. So not that much more to go. Uh, I'm hoping I can get it done also before the combine needs fuel. I mean, I'm going to fuel the combine today anyways, but I'd like to get the harvesting done before I refill the combine with some diesel fuel. Uh, I was looking in this field as well, uh, how what condition it's in. It needs some lime. Now, the Kubota spreader does well, but I think if I'm going to lime these fields with the spreader that we have, I'll probably upgraded to a 10,000 liter. I don't know how much that's going to cost. I don't want to spend... I know it sounds weird. I don't, want, I don't want to spend too much money upgrading it because I would like to leave it at the capacity that it is for fertilizer. So maybe, you know, may, maybe if I do this job down here and spread lime, maybe I'll lease the Breedle spreader if it's not too expensive. Now, something else I may try this episode. Uh, as, I'm, as I'm recording this, I'm actually recording on the July 4th. Was it yesterday, the July 3rd, that the there was a hut pack that came out? And basically, the hut pack is nothing more than a package of houses that we can place on the map where it earns its income. And I was like, ooh, I like that idea. That could work very well on Gold Crest Valley for what we're doing. So I loaded in the game today, and the first thing I tried to do, you know, I figured out the Kubota and, you know, fiddle around with the sea drill. And it was like, oh yeah, the, the, these huts here. How much money do they make? Well, that's where the problem came in. Uh, they make too much money from what I'm seeing, but I remember doing this before on another map and I didn't make as much money as it says I was going to. So it could be that the mod is showing me what you could make on easy mode, but we play in hard. So I think what we may do is we may put down one of these huts. We'll, we'll get to it when we get done with this harvesting. And we'll put down one of the huts and we'll see how much it makes. If it makes as much as it says it does, uh, we'll just have to get rid of it because uh, we're talking like $30,000 a month for the smallest house. So I don't want to make that much on a house. If it's if that's for easy mode and hard mode is one third of that, that means I can make $10,000 a month, which seems about right because a house is going to cost us like 50 or 60 to put down. So it'll be a half a year just for me to get my money back. Uh, and, and pay for, you know, just pay for the house to get my money back on. So it would be nice to have some income. And basically what this mod is for, yeah, it, it's like a generator, of course. 
but as you role play with it, uh, basically you're just putting a house down and you're renting out the house to whoever. Uh, you know, role play from there on. But I think we'll put it down just to give it a go and have a good look at it. And like I said, if it does make that, if it does make thirty thousand dollars a month, um, what I can do is we'll leave it down for like about two months. Or is it one? No, one month. One month will give me thirty thousand. Because when I sell the hut, I'm only going to get half my money back. So I want to just come even, Steven, if you will, on the mod if it does make that much money. And I think I, I was going to put it down with the sunflower uh, field, but you know it's nice and flat here, and we got like a little bit of space. Just you can see a little corner over there. I think it'll, I got talking too much, and I wasn't paying attention to, to the combine. Uh, it's nice and flat over there. I think it'd be a good place for the house. Well, when I say good place for the house, it's a decent place for the house because it's like right next to the railroad tracks. So maybe not the best place for the house. I will say this little Rudolph trailer that we got lucky enough to buy off the used section and upgrading it to the capacity that it is. Two combine full loads can go into this trailer and it brings up like 98%. So it's almost like these two were made for one another. So as, that fi as that's filling up, let me go ahead and bring you in and we can kind of uh, have a look here. So we got to go to productions. I got to remember to put this on the mod list here. Uh, nope. Uh, wait, productions, generators, generators. There we go. So right here at the end, um, there's four houses in the hut pack mod. I don't know where the tiny house farm buildings pack mod is that's another one i'm not sure where that came from because it's not part of the hut pack mod i don't think because it just says mod it may be part of omatana's uh farming pack mod that i have running i don't know uh, but anyways seventy-two thousand for the house and you can see it makes twenty-seven thousand six hundred dollars a month so if i just earn one third of that we're talking like nine thousand dollars a month which seems you know about right and then we're talking like eight months before I break even on the house. If it does that, then I think we can just roll with it. But if I do make $30,000 a month, that seems, I don't know, to me that seems excessive. I mean, it's nice, don't get me wrong. Some people just want to make loads of money uh, really fast and then, of course, go farming. But I don't want to say I like to play it slow, but then, you know, I, I like to make money like everyone else does, but... Uh, at a certain rate. We all have our rates that we want to progress on our farm. And I think we, I think so far uh, here on Goldcrest, we progressed rather nicely um, for the amount of fields that we have. Um, I feel like I've got, like I said last uh, last episode, uh, when we're here for a full year, I've been very lucky the way I set the rules out, just buying from the used section, of getting what we have. Um, you know, I didn't get like a small combine and then have a hard time getting a header. It was like we got a combine and two months later it's like, well, here's a header. It's like, it's not the same brand. Will it attach? And I said, you know, I was thinking to myself, I think it will. And it does. And it works for just, just fine. And someone did, uh, did mention that, you know, a lot of combines do use off-brand headers anyways, which is true. But I didn't know since this is classed as a New Holland header, is this header made by New Holland? Or is it a header that is made for New Holland? So basically it could be a header company out there that's making headers, they just put the New Holland name on it and it can generically fit to old combines. I, I don't know. I don't know about that stuff. I wonder if I can get the rest of this harvest in this combine, which means one more trailer load. But, you know, the farm's just up over the hill. So it was kind of interesting. When I first, before I started harvesting this field, and it must have been the, the map maker or the modder converting this map from 17 over to 22, uh, when they were testing the map itself, it was kind of interesting because in this field here, the outer line of the field... Um, had in the crop rotation section it had a different crop in it than the inner part of the map. The inner part had like sugar cane and the outer part of the map I think it had corn and then it was follow 
and now it has canola into it, so. They must have been testing out the props and making sure everything looked good on the map. Yep, we're starting to blink a little bit in the red on the uh, on the fuel. Oh yeah, in last episode, uh, we did get ourselves a forklift with uh, pallet forks on it. So, <laughs> I, I've been very lucky in FS22 from the store page. Uh, going back to East Vineland, how many times was it I was looking for... I think uh, on East Island, the first thing that came up, I, I wanted a bailing trailer. I said, this is the bailing trailer that I want, but we'll buy it when I'm ready to, you know, to get the bales. And that day, it's like, okay, we're doing bailing. Time to get the bailing trailer. And I looked in the, you know, the use section, and there it was. The exact implement I was looking for. It's happened, I think on East Island, it happened like three or four times. And like I said, here, it's, you know, it, it's... I'm not looking for anything in particular, but things are coming up that we need. And the one thing we need next, I, I would love, is a mower. Uh, a mower would be good. Not the Chrome Big M. Uh, in the future, that would be nice, but I can't afford the Chrome Big M. Even in, from the used section, where it could be like 50% off. Uh, that would still be like 200 grand. We don't have that. And I do plan on spending that uh, $70,000 to put down that little little home right here. Actually, you know what? I can probably put the home over in that corner. The other corner. We'll get away from the railroad tracks a little bit anyways. Put it over in this corner. It should fit. I may have to smooth out the land a little bit though. Actually, if I put it straight ahead of us, that land looks kind of flat. Yeah, we can do that. We, we can make it work. If I own over there I'm not quite sure I know exactly where the boundary is. And I can't wait to see the alfalfa and clover grow. There's the field right over there we planted in that last episode. So we just got to wait for that to uh, germinate and grow. And right, there is our canola harvest done with. Let's grab the John Deere. And we'll empty out the combine. Uh, we'll drop off the header. Combine needs to go be refueled. Then I can pick up the header on the way back. But yeah, getting that 45 foot header was really nice because it did take me a while to harvest these, uh, these fields. I think last year when we had the case, axial flow with a 8 meter header, I knew, I said, okay, I want to need a bigger header to do all the fields that we're doing. And yep, we lucked out. Uh, I probably should have a look in because I kind of forgot what's in the store. Uh, oh, there's the telehandler. Yep, there's the drill. That, that Voltra is still there. What is this? Oh, sugar cane? Oh, yeah, we're not, we're not doing sugar cane. Nope. Not going to do it. Right, let's turn that off. Right, put the pipe in. Let's unfold the header. Drop that down. Okay, let's go ahead and fold up the class try-on. Oh yeah, I should mention because it, it's about to happen where I live. Uh, like I said, I'm recording this on July 4th and I'm doing it at nighttime. And it, in the States, it is, well, the 4th of July. Um, so the fireworks are about to go off in my town, I would assume. So if you start, if you see your distance booming, I don't think the microphone's going to pick it up. But uh, just in case it does. And I, and I, I've been hearing fireworks all weekend, so I may start hearing them and not think anything of it. And then you're going to be watching the video. I'm like, what's all that booming noise I'm hearing now and then? It's fireworks. Neighbors have set off a few of themselves. I do live out live out in the sticks. Uh, that's why my neighbors, you know, freak, you know, we, we have no problem lighting out fireworks when we need to. Anyways, uh, let's uh, just go in here. And the fuel pumps only work for me over here. 
Yep, she's filling up. Actually, I'll turn that engine off. Uh, so the, our environmental score in these fields here, um, they didn't get as high as they did in the other fields for a couple reasons. Um, uh, we did not drill these fields and this one here, yeah, the bottom, bottom line there, as you can see, that is for direct drilling and yeah, so these fields were not direct drilled. Apparently, um, the pH value is kind of, uh, off on these two fields here. Um, apparently this field needs to be having some pH into it. Did I not put pH in that field? I don't remember. And then uh, that field there. Yeah, so overall our scores with 93, which means a 13% bonus when we sell some items. So that's very nice. Uh, while that is still filling up, it's almost done. Uh, we'll grab the John Deere. Oh, wow. There's a nice fuel bill to get on a combine, 1,159. Yeah, we'll just drive right across our fields here. Yeah, so I don't think, actually, after we uh, take care of this, I don't have anything else to do in September. Well, I mean, I, I could do some work here. I could throw some lime down in these fields and everything, but um, I may just skip to the next month because I kind of want to see what this house is going to do for income. It was too much, like I said. We're going to just have to... I feel like we should get rid of it. Um, but definitely... Oh, yeah, this... Uh, there's a little light in the in, in the front of the John Deere. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like it'll be too much if we do make that much money. But of course, feel free to comment down below what you think we can uh, should do with it. Sometimes you guys surprise me, like on Hinterland uh, with the coffee beans uh, situation. I thought it was going to be more of, yeah, get rid of it. And you guys said, no, keep it. Uh, I was like, well, okay, I guess we'll keep it. Now we can see, in just a moment, from our stock market page, on the canola, how much we can expect to make in November. I think it's November. Make sure it all gets into the silo. All right, and then we go oh, right there. And canola uh, should get about 83, 84,000 before our bonus. And it says December. Um, is what we should get. All right. That's not too bad. 100,000. Although, I, as I've said before, in other series, I always bring my products to do production buildings. I'm not used to selling grain as is. So, uh, but I think that's a pretty good price for canola. On hard economy, that is. Oh yeah, and um, as for our other drill, I guess we can call it a drill, but it's also a subsoiler right there. We're going to keep that because if I need to plow a field, um, that that is a plow. So, uh, we're going to keep that for now. And let's teleport back to the John, uh, John Deere. The Kloss Tryon. Alright, we're full of fuel. Let's go get the header and bring that back to the farm. Grass field will be ready in October to cut. So that's why I'm kind of saying I would like to get a mower. Uh, if it works out I and uh, a tractor doesn't come up for sale, so on and so forth, but uh, I probably won't have the money to do so because I'm going to put down this house. We could convert the John Deere over to have a three-point leakage on the front. And we could do a butterfly mower and the mower in the front. I may do that anyways. We'll have to see how the money situation is. Yeah, but I said I wouldn't go over the curbs, and here I am going over the curbs again. I guess uh, from here, I either would have to go down the road a little bit more, which is not too far. Um, I thought it was on this side, but it's on. Is it in the ground? I'm looking for 
as we call it here in America, I, I've always been told it's called a tongue that comes out, that hooks up to whatever you're hooking up to. Is it in the ground? I don't see it. Or am I hooking up to the other, wrong side here? I should be on the correct... Oh, no, there it was. Yeah, it was on the ground. I knew it was on the correct... Well, I thought it was on the correct side because it has the uh, cone of... Uh, the triangle on the back. At least I thought it... Did. I thought that was on, on the back, which it is, but then I just realized there's one here too. So <laughs> let me let me just move this out of the way. We'll just forget what I was just saying there. All right, let's go back into construction mode, and we're going to try out one of these huts and see what it does. Uh, generators. Um, so yeah, we do got like I said, different type of houses. That uh, we got these two. They cost the same, and they'll bring in twenty-seven six. Or you got these that cost two hundred thirty thousand, and they'll bring you in forty-eight thousand a month. Uh, just just let you know what size they are. So that's the uh, the two hundred thirty thousand dollar house. They look the same size, and then we got these right here for seventy-two. Let's go ahead and. Just trying to figure out where should I, you know, where should I put this really? Can I really like? This might actually look pretty good right here. I got enough money. Okay, I got to do this. Hang on a second. There we go. Kind of put this in in the forest a little bit. There we go. A little bit of a, a log cabin in the woods. Now we got a place for rent. Um, we'll see how much. I don't know if it's per hour or is it just you know. Do we get income coming in at night? Let's see what our money looks like for the month. I don't think I've sold anything this month. So if it does come in by the hour, we'll see. So what we can do is let's go ahead and fast forward some time. See if the money goes up by the hour. Okay, so that was... Uh, Let's see what we get for a full hour. Is that what? I, I, that wasn't a full hour. Uh, property income. Yeah, that that that's gonna be. If that's only for one hour, you times that by twenty-four. That's gonna be exactly what we earn. Let's just go another hour. Yeah, so, all right, so this, let's, let's look, at, look at this the way uh, I would prefer to do it. Now, I believe that's make, making too much money for us here. Uh, where the heck am I? There we go. Uh, so I could, so I would need to keep it for like a month and a half, and then I could sell it, and I would get basically a full refund on it. But I'm going to let you guys decide if you think we should keep it or get rid of it after the month and a half. Uh, make your comments quick because um, we're going to be advancing to the next month here pretty soon, but not far enough to where I can't get rid of that anyways. Yeah, so that's going to that's going to bring in exactly what it says in the description. So I'm just wondering because I can do this. So if I go ahead, uh, where do I change that? Uh, not there. Economy difficulty. If I go to easy. Construction. Production. Generators. So it doesn't matter if you're on easy or hard economy. The, the income is the same. Make sure I put that back to hard economy. There we go. All right, so we got we got ourselves a rented house for about a month and a half. Let's go ahead and get the combine back to the shop. We'll give it a good rinse, a nice cleanup. Um, the combine doesn't is not uh, too too off uh, on the repair status, so I think we'll just give it a good wash. But you know what? If it's not that far off on the repair status, it's going to be kind of cheap to repair anyways. So let's wash it and repair the header and the combine, shall we? It's 
skip on down here. It is kind of nice having the main uh, farm with like no traffic coming off, off of it, I think. Um, that way it gives you some time to adjust yourself to driving on the road before you got, have to wait for traffic everywhere, I guess. Although a lot of the maps I've been playing on, there has been no traffic, right? I um, mean, we went to No Man's Land, Hinterland, Solendra. All these maps, no traffic. I repaired the header for 144. And the class Tryon for 957. I don't think... Will it reach? It will reach. Place as intended. Okay, really not, but <laughs> it works. Yeah, that's nice and clean. Actually, we're not done with the combine this year. I kind of forgot. We still got sunflowers. I forgot about my field of sunflowers. I think I forgot about it because the only work I've done into that field is spraying for weeds. We still got a sunflower. It'll be a quick harvest. With the header that we got, um, yeah, it's going to be a quick harvest. Let's go drop off the header. And this is why I really liked about the shed back in 17. Because when you got a dolly system like we got in this header, it's hard to back things up. So to be able to... Oh, I went through here the first time, no problem. Don't get stuck. Well, the first time I did this, I drove right through without getting stuck anywhere. And now the header is getting stuck. There we go. Get the header all under and the tongue of the trailer sticks out a little bit, but that's fine. Oh, I did bring down the silage additive as well from the shop to here. Park that in. All right, am, am I all set for the month? Yeah, I was in here checking out the keys late, uh, before recording. Uh, no, wrong page. Uh, so the sheep, yeah, of course they got grass, they got water, they are fine. Uh, they're actually in the reproduction stage at this point. I think we bought them all as newborn, so, but we've been here a year, so that, that makes sense. And of course the chickens are all looking good. They're not making enough eggs as of yet. But uh, they shall get there. Uh, we don't have any production buildings to check on. And as for fields, other than our grass field, we got the uh, sunflower field over here. So all of our fields are harvested. Uh, we got the two alfalfa and clover fields there growing. Our grass field, of course, doesn't show it because I got grass turned off. Uh, that field's harvested in field 21. That'll be ready for harvest, maybe. Uh, in October. Let's go ahead and speed up some time. Watch the money go up thanks to our <laughs> lovely new house. See, so yeah, I do leave a comment below if you think we should keep it or get rid of it. But making $30,000 a month, that is going to be, well, what does it say? Like more like 27 something? But you know what I mean. Uh, seems like a lot. I'm just speeding up time until, until just about 8 o'clock at night. But 8 o'clock at night now is going to be kind of dark. Then I check the store, then I go to bed. Just because I don't know how long things actually stay in the store. I don't know how that actually works. I don't know if some stuff stays only in there like 5 or 6 hours and someone may buy it. I have no idea. Alright, 7.30 is good enough for me. And nothing has changed. So... I think we're all set. Let's go ahead and sleep the night away. Welcome to October. And uh, we're going to have made some pretty good uh, cash overnight. 5750 overnight. So that's uh, pretty decent compared to what we used to get, which was nothing. Um, ooh. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, first off, I don't have the money. And uh, second off, no thanks. 
Uh, there's a uh, soil sampler. You know, I mean, we are doing soil sampling here, but is it worth it? And I think that's the that's the that's the big one. I think sixty five. Uh, that's under miscellaneous. Yeah, that is a bigger one. I'm just trying to see when I lease it. It only costs eight hundred sixty seven to lease. So I think I'll say I'll keep my money on that because. It's not something that we need it a lot. So I, I think for now, we'll just go ahead and keep on leasing that. That's fine. Oh, yeah. Do I, I don't remember. I don't have anything leased, right? No, we have nothing leased. So, unfortunately for me right now, uh, well, I shouldn't say unfortunately. We've been very lucky here in the used uh, section. Uh, for mowing grass this month, we're going to have to go ahead and get her, lease ourselves some mowers. Um, but, yes, our sunflower field is, is ready. And uh, I think uh, we'll go ahead and harvest that first next episode. And then we'll get to the grass. And I think uh, we're going to wrap up this episode here. Um, just because uh, when I get involved in these jobs here, it's going to take a while. And I also want to see your comments come in about the house. Uh, keep it or get rid of it. Um, but usually you guys troll me and it's like almost like right down the middle. So we shall see um, how the votes are coming on in. And uh, what you guys think. But, uh, yeah. Uh, I I'm getting kind of excited because uh, we're going to be selling... Oh, yeah. How much is the silage going for today? Because we got to sell that uh, silage. we got to empty out that uh, silo bunker. Ooh, those are some pretty good prices. And the bale sell point is not that bad. And we got like 100 and... 160,000 liters? Oh, and I may have to... No, this this time I'm going to lease the shovel. We're going to... Not, not, sorry, not the shovel. We're going to lease the uh, the belt and load it up. I'm not going to do like I did before with the forage wagon. Uh, we got 172,000 liters of silage to bring in. So, um, that's going to bring in some cash as well. So, that's not too bad. And then this grass here just get cut, put into a swath, pick it up out of a forage wagon. And repeat, because we still got plenty of hay bales and such for the sheep. But anyways, that's going to do it for today, guys. Hopefully you guys did enjoy the episode. I do appreciate you watching. As always, I'll catch you again right here in Goldcrest Valley. But until then, have a good one.